Good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The early birds are here. Delano Brown, I know you're from Barbados. Lawrence Chan, I know you're from Singapore. Um, Nabi Bosole from St. Lucia. And Winsbert Regis, my brother from St. Lucia. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, myself, Nabi Bosole, and Winsbert Regis? We all live in a quarter of Groselay, uh, one of the three towns uh, in St. Lucia. So we, uh, we live within close proximity of each other. So again, let me welcome everyone on this call. So Lawrence, it's always a pleasure to have you on this call. And um, you are indeed a regular on our call. Yes, 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 um, Delano Brown. Yes, I do remember you, Maria Baptist uh, Downline. Very good. How is Barbados, uh, Delano? Oh, Lord, yes, from Singapore. Singapore, yes, and it's 9.45 a.m. Great, great. So good morning. Have you had your coffee yet? Or should I say, have you had your, fount your first uh, 10 drops of Fountain of Life? Great, that is great in Barbados. Actually, Delano, I studied in Barbados. That's why I did my first degree, uh, 1993 to 95. That's why I had to, I had to be eating cuckoo and flying fish. <laughs> wow, Lawrence, 30 drops. You remind me of myself. I do not take 10 drops anymore. It's always 20, 25, and at times eat more than 30. Yes, Delano, ramen and, ramen and noodles. <laughs> well, you see, when you're a student, you are poor. And so you have to go for the cheapest, the, 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 the cheapest commodity to, to, to sustain you. You know, students are poor, you know, but it didn't stop us from having plenty fun in Barbados. So yes, we do have some time before our presenter comes on and, and starts to deliver mind-blowing, enlightening, um, educational tidbits to us that we can um, use to build our business, improve ourselves, become a developer, you know, concentrate on our self-development. So yes. Let's get as many persons on this call as possible. Let our partners know that the call is launched and uh, they should be joining the call. Let's pack this call, ladies and gentlemen, as all other calls. It is important, we as partners, to be on these calls and to invite all our team members to these calls because these calls are specifically geared to partners, to interested persons, to persons who need the, the knowledge to uplift themselves, to motivate themselves, to get out of the, of the rut that they may be in at times, to be able to excel and propel their business forward, okay? Because we need to start momentum. We need to be able to advance that momentum. And in order to achieve that level of success that every one of, one of us looks forward to, it, we need to sustain that momentum. So we need to be creative. And that is why our training session last week with Daniela Ferreira was so fantastic. There's so many creative ways of doing things, you know? And last Saturday, we, we touched on... on um, financial management. We as partners are independent business owners and we need to understand that profit, profitability of your business is, the, is different to revenue. 
And so you once you you sell products, you can't ex you, you you should not go on the assumption that the monies you have um, generated is your money or is money to be spent. No, it's money to be reinvested into your business to expand your business. That is how businesses expand. That is how businesses become more profitable over the years. Coca Cola did not just start and and became a multi billion dollar company overnight you know and it was consistent growth i mean if you speak to warren buffett warren saw that coca-cola was the way to go and he and his partner what did they do they continued to invest and invest and invest now look at warren buffett i mean just taking this this multi-billionaire you know when you look at him he has, he lives in a house that he bought 30, 40 years ago, you know, and, and he has this saying that I am, he is cool in summer and he's warm in winter. Why does he need a multi-million dollar mansion with so many rooms and so on? You know, so, you know, sometimes it's good to take a page from people like Warren Buffett. You know, I was watching one of uh, Warren Buffett's um, recordings. I think there was some documentary on him. And his daughter said that she was pregnant and she went to the father to, to ask him for, she said a loan, you know, of $45,000 to, um, a, you know, retrofit her kitchen because she had a baby on the way. And the father said, no. Can you imagine this? You know, Warren Buffett, multi-billionaire, and uh, his daughter is asking him for forty-five thousand dollars, which he fully intended to to repay, and he said to her, "No, he's not giving it to her." You know, so this is the man. This is the individual who he is simple in his ways, yet still. This guy is worth over what? The last time, I think when he was number one uh, in, in terms of the richest people in the world, I think he stood at something like $68 billion. You know, I, since then, I think, um, um, is it my, Microsoft? Yeah, Bill Gates has, has taken over. And then you have um, Mark Zuckerman, um, Facebook, you know. And it just goes to show you how quickly uh, wealth can be generated, but you need to be persistent, you need to be consistent, you need to be motivated, you need to be inspired. And this is what Uplands Global does for us. This is why we have these calls. This is why we have to invite all our, our members um, our team members on this on these calls to get our prospects on this call so they themselves can be motivated they themselves can be inspired they themselves can get their imaginations to be stretched so much that they cannot go back to the original position and these people then develop a hunger a hunger for more a hunger to excel a hunger to continue to learn and educate themselves consistently, a hunger to help persons in need, a hunger to just be the best person you can be and to interact with humanity on, on a, a level of sensitivity, on a level of passion, you know, on a level of love and warmth. And this is what we, as Opelens Global Partners, learn from this, from being together. This is truly indeed a family. It does not matter where we are in the world, which country. Look, Lawrence is in Singapore. It's, it's, it's eight minutes to 10 in the morning, okay? Bonaventura is in Viewfort, St. Lucia. Ashton is from the, spa, the, 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 the nature isle of Dominica, okay? And again, as I said, Ashton, Dominica has been hit in the last few years by two major hurricanes, Erica and Maria. And yet still these people are so resilient that they continue
to it. So we have Rene on the call. Um, let me upgrade Rene to panelists. Rene Leo, Rene Leo, welcome, welcome to the call. <laughs> we have been waiting for you. It's great to be here again as always, and uh, glad to see that you're still the one hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I will take this. I will say thank you and say nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, yeah, yes, please continue. Yes. Can't wait to get started though. Okay, yes. Well, we have a few persons on the call. We have a few more minutes. And so I was, I ended up, I started talking about um, people like um, Warren Buffett. And um, I was watching a documentary about him, Rene. And uh, his house that he bought 30, 40 years ago. He still lives in it and he says that he's comfortable. In the summer, he's, he's cool. And in the winter, he's warm. So why does he need to go and, and buy a multi-million dollar mansion? No, oh, Rene has, I think Rene is doing something else. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, going back to, to, to um, Dominica. Dominica has been hit so much. Maria decimated this country, and today Dominica is getting back on its feet. Dominica's people are resilient. We Caribbean people are resilient. We keep being hit by hurricanes annually, but we continue to fight because you cannot afford to give up. There is no giving up in this. We need to be persistent. And this is the same way, the same resilience that we have when it comes to um, the hurricanes and all the storms that we hit by. We need to apply this to our business, our Upperlands Global business. We need to build ourselves because we have the tools. The company provides us with the tools. And so we need to use those tools to achieve success in the business. Yes, Maria Baptiste from Toronto. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, we know Maria is from Grenada, the Spice Isle of Grenada, and she is the queen of Grenada. And yes, Maria, um, Delano Brown, your downline is on that call already. Let me see how many other persons are the per Donna, Donna Harper, welcome to the call. Valine, Valine from Anguilla, welcome, Valine. Okay, well, let's try to get it. It's, it's, we have four more minutes left. Um, what I would like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is on the hour, I would like to just do a recap because this is the third part of Rene dealing with the pitfalls of uh, uh, compensation plans. And so what I'd like to do is to take maybe about five minutes and do a, a recap uh, of what Rene has covered, you know, very succinctly. Um, in five minutes so that we can move on to part three because I know everyone is looking forward to part three. And yes, Rene, no one more than me because Rene, you are the guru of compensation plan. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sorry, I was actually just trying to uh, uh, get some water. So I apologize if I, if I missed you there, but um, um, yes, I can't wait because I know that this uh, part three, um, I thought I could do it in, in two parts, but it looks like there's a few more uh, things to come. And again, you know, I can keep on going for as long as people want to uh, learn these topics. But today um, I have my slides already ready on the next part. And uh, like you mentioned, I think last week we left off, uh, just to share my screen here really quickly. I think we left off on this screen, which was the uh, payout requalification. Payout, yes, yes. Yes. I okay. think that's where we, what was that? I think that was pitfall number five. Uh, yeah. So, you know, what? I think we've I've lost track. I've gone back and forth. Uh, this one here is number I think four. you had moved forward. So okay. if I recall, it was payout flushing, 
and blocking of CV. Okay, yes, yes, that was number and five. And then we had gone, um, the last one is there, um, I think the last thing was, is there a maximum in how much commission you can make from your business center and how much is it? Right, okay, okay. So, because you had moved forward. Yes, I went to, back after. To, yeah. That's right. So, okay, well. explain something. Thank you. You're right. You're right. So we, yeah, we were on five and we went, uh, I guess the week before we went a bit more forward. So we'll start here tonight. Uh, we covered number eight and uh, let's just start by number nine again. It's, it's a really short one, but we'll start there once people are, 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 are ready. Okay. Let me, let me see this. Let me see how, let me just check the person's on the call. I just want to make sure that yes, it's, one minute to go, so I want to make sure that we've got a part call as we, we've, we've had before. Um, Beverly, welcome to the call. I don't know, BFOL, BCS, I don't know who you are, but please indicate where you're joining us from. Um, I felt Brown, welcome to the call. Um, uh, we have, okay, Rock, I don't know, Team, Team Paso. Pasuik, I think. Uh, you're from, is it Sweden? Um, Ton Makareg. And uh, yes, so welcome everybody to the call. And yes, Tim is from, oh, Tim is from Re High River, Alberta. Tim, I've been making this mistake. I think your surname <laughs> puts me off a bit. Um, so sometimes I always think you're from a different country. You know, I own my mistakes, you know, um, Rene. <laughs> Yes, and uh, Brown, Maria Baptiste. Yes, so Rene, it's, it's now on the hour. So what I will do is take just a few minutes to just go through those you've covered. No less than five, no more than five minutes. And then you will take it from there. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, for the third part, we have Rene Liao, our youngest millionaire in the business, a very humble young gentleman and uh, a family man, an individual who, like me, has to put his babies to sleep. That is very good, you know. And um, Rene has proven to us that it does not matter from what background you're from, once you are determined to succeed this business is the business that equalize, is the equalizer according to the Forensic Networker, our CEO. And Rene has proven this. And Rene, you are indeed an inspiration to many of us. I know for myself personally, I can tell you that you are indeed a great inspiration. So I welcome you to the call, Rene, but um, permit me just a few minutes to just go through the pitfalls that you've, in, you've indicated in the last two sessions, okay? So this is our third part. And then Rene has covered a number of the pitfalls. We are on a number five, but as you know, sometimes he moves forward. So tonight he will start on, on, on pitfall number nine. But some of the key ones he's covered, pitfall number one was the payout allocation. When we, we need to look at the, the, the composition of, the, or, or the mix between commission and bonuses. Some compensation plans, you know, they, they cover a lot in bonuses and then you have less commission. So you have to be wary of this. You have to look out. Second one is the payout levels. How many levels does your, 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 your compensation plan pay to, right? The third one we have is the payout and ranks. To be able to restrict the flow of money to partners, you know, that's what sometimes that's what happens. They, 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 you, you are paid at certain ranks and others are not. So when you reach certain ranks, in order to unlock bonuses, then what do these bonuses really have to do with you? So it's a matter of that there seems to be a disconnect at times when you look at the payout and the ranks. Pitfall number four is payout gimmicks and car programs. Now, you know, ladies and gentlemen, in Upper Lens Global, we have no gimmicks, period. You know, it's straight to the point. 
and uh, Rene simplifies our, our, our compensation plan always. In pitfall number five is the payout flushing or blocking of CVs. And uh, a number of persons who've been in other MLM companies, when they look at the compensation, you know, including myself, because I was in another one for a short while. And what happened is one month I did, I spent over $22,000 because I was getting ready for my first baby, you know, so I bought plenty of stuff. And then the next month I did not purchase anything. And guess what? All my points were flushed out. And I said to myself, cut, but you need to cut your losses. And that's what I did. And I did away with it. So Rene, that is why your training in the pitfalls of compensation plan is so important to me. And I know everybody else on this call. So with this, Rene, I would like to thank you in advance. And I know it will be a great third part training on the pitfalls of compensation plan. Okay, well, thank you. thank you, Cuthbert, and, uh, and a lot of things to cover tonight. But again, um, I think uh, you're almost uh, pretty much going to be the next trainer for Calm Plan Pitfalls in the future. So you, you got everything down back solid. So, okay, so uh, just to save us some time, I'm just going to dive right into this again. But I want to say thank you to all of you guys for being on the call tonight and hope you enjoy uh, the continuation. And as always, love to hear and see your comments. So number nine, I think we talked about uh, really briefly in the last call, but I'll go over it really quickly again. It's just a payout with qualification. And what that means is, a lot of companies, in order for you to keep your commissions or to keep your monthly payment, aside from doing your typical monthly, you know, they call the auto ship or your monthly, you know, commitment, um, they have additional, in some companies, additional things you have to do to keep your bonuses or to keep um, uh, bonuses are one thing. We, you know, bonuses uh, we're expected to do something to get the bonuses, but when it comes to your core commissions, like your core core commissions. Some companies have things in place that you had to do to get your core commission. So in my previous companies, if you did not enroll a brand new partner once a month, you didn't get your commissions. It, it was just horrendous, right? So uh, again, we don't have that here in Optimus Global. Again, there's none of this kind of silliness. Um, you know, literally, once you have your, your, your uh, account set up and you have your one left and one right, there's no need to do anything monthly to keep your commissions. You get that your commissions on a weekly basis forever, uh, forever. In other companies, of course, we mentioned before, you have to sponsor people. And a lot of the other uh, unit level uh, breakaway comp plans, they really uh, have you maintain certain amount of monthly sales. So remember how in that one slide, we had that stair-step breakaway that showed uh, the higher the amount of sales in your team, the higher commission you're earning. But think about that, right? If you don't maintain your level of group sales, then your, your, your commission percentage comes down again, right? So a lot of people like Cuthbert just mentioned, what they're doing is they're actually buying and ensuring they have enough group volume to keep their commissions. So again, luckily at <laughs> Global, we don't have that here, okay? And that's pitfall number nine. Now pitfall number 10 can be a lengthy one, but it's such an important one. And I think it's the key one that a lot of people in the industry don't give much thought about when getting involved in an opportunity. That, of course, comes down to payout retention. And just think about this, right? If you bring in 100 partners into your business, let's say in your first few months, the first year, but 90 of them quit, or forget about partners. If you have 100 customers that come on board, and again, 90 of them are gone, after the first month, then you know you don't really have a good retention. Now, uh, what we're talking about, of course, here in terms of retention is what is the uh, company's retention ratio for monthly reorders? Because sometimes you know you you know it's best to look at it from a company point of view, right? Uh, company wide averages. And again, on the DSA, just to share with you, we talked about it before. The average retention ratio is about ten percent. When I learned of that that the average retention ratio in direct sales is 10%, I was just mind blown. It meant that majority, like you're constantly on that spinning wheel, the hamster wheel, as you call it, trying to reach your goal, but you're just going in circles, right? So one thing that was really important for me was to pick a company that I could at least have some logical understanding or 
you know, some basic concepts of why do I think that this opportunity will have a higher retention ratio. I hope this makes sense, right? Um, and so again, you know, uh, the, so the DSA ratio, um, there's an annual renewal ratio and there's the monthly activity ratio. So uh, for the annual reorder ratio uh, for renewals is about 10%. For the actual monthly uh, activity ratio, it's 6%, which is just horrendous, horrendous. So again, you know, with Opulence Global, um, we're sitting at least 40 plus, which is already eight times, seven, eight times the, the actual averages out there. But again, I think for a lot of people who are especially brand new in their first one, two, three, four years, they're going to be seeing a much, much higher uh, retention ratio than this. This is a sort of like, you know, company wide, even after, even after uh, about 14 years now for the company running. So again, um, you know, when it comes to uh, retention being renewals, it's about 10%, okay? And for us, we have actually, it's, I think it's actually even higher now. We have a very high uh, renewal ratio, especially now that we have, again, I think for the new people who are in their first one, two, three years, you're probably looking at about 90%, you know, uh, uh, renewal rate, uh, ratio for people who are just renewing their account to keep their discounts, right? So the key thing here is we are already seven uh, times, five times higher than the average in the industry out there. So here's basically my, um, my, my opinion, and I'm going to expand upon this on the next slide, is there's a lot of things that, that give you better retention. And to start, if we need to understand, first of all, that people either get involved because they want to earn income, and majority of people will, when we say get involved or join, we're talking about people actually sign up for the packages, right? They're paying to, to get in for the advisor, the promoter, the retailer. A lot of them are getting involved because they want to make money. Like they want to make money. Yes, they see great products. Yes, they can see they are going to benefit from the product, but they're, they're, they're getting jo the joining because they actually want to make money, right? So if your product, like my previous companies, has too many, and this is a key word, similar competitors. So if you're selling vitamins, there are hundreds of vitamins out there. If you're selling juices, there are plenty of juice companies out there, pills, right? Um, and so if, if you have too many of the similar type of product, then it's very hard to hold on to your, your distributors just in general speaking. But that's where, you know, again, we're so blessed because in the whole entire world, we're the only company, the only company that has a lignin-based product, Fountain of Life, and that works quickly under the tongue. Like there's no one else that has this product, period, even close, even, you know, universally or multi-universally uh, close to the Fountain of Life. Okay, but let's expand upon this though. So again, I want to drill this point to the people that, maybe have been accustomed to joining one company, building it for a few months, a year, two years max, and then have their, their income die, and then join a second company, thinking this is going to be the company, to have your income go up and down again, and do it again and again. It's shocking to me, because I've met people you know, in my career of direct sales that have been in over 20 to 30 companies. Now, I'm not blaming these people because sometimes we don't know what we don't know. We don't you know, if you had this training, I believe you would have picked this company <laughs> a long time ago, right? But one question that I want you to ask yourself is, you know, if you're that person that likes to, as we call it, grasshop or jump around, like, like, uh, like uh, grasshoppers, jump from one, one company to the next company, do you really want to keep on doing that? Do you really want to keep on doing that? Or do you want to find a company that you can build it once and have logical reasons why we have a higher retention ratio and keep making residual income for a long period of time? I think most people would choose the latter. So let me give you a scenario here. Let's say that, you know, if every three months a new company comes out with the best product, and I'm sure we've all heard it before, right? You know, uh, I, I constantly get phone calls from people, Renee, there's a new opportunity, it's the best products, you know. Again, if that product happens to be vitamins and you're selling vitamins, or juice and you're selling juice, 
you know, then what do you do? If it's, you know, it's coffee and, and there's other coffee companies, or if you're selling, I don't know, some kind of a water product and there's other water filters, then what do you do, right? You know, um, I can assure you, at this point in time, a lot of factors can cause you or even beyond you, your distributors to join this new company. Maybe it sounds more exciting. Maybe they're saying it's better, right? Maybe it's cheaper. So many things can impact the retention ratio. So do you keep fighting with these new companies, constantly trying to prove, you know, that my water filter is better than your water filter or my vitamin is better than your vitamin or, you know, you know my travel is better than your travel. You know what I mean? Um, and meanwhile, every distributor is saying, you know, uh, okay, this I don't promote. I don't think it's ever great to say bad things about other companies. In fact, when I talk about other companies, I always say, yeah, I believe they have great products. However, here is what we have that, you know, and here's scientifically, logically, why I think it's better. There's more lignus, more antioxidants. It works faster under the tongue one hour. I have my reasons, right? So, but the other key thing that is the, in my opinion, a major impact on how quickly you can build your team on how quickly you can, build your customer base and how how good you can have a good retention it comes down to are your products too expensive you know one of the most amazing things about our our owner uh, of, of the company mr Ramin Mazgarlu, is he's not greedy he understands that if he overprices an item you know beyond uh logic and beyond reason that it's not going to sell well and on one of the private calls I've had with them, it's, it's, just, it's just a good sign when the owner of your company understands these things and he prices the products at the absolute most best pricing. And so think about this, right? If the product you are selling is too expensive, what happens to your customers? They have many options, right? So on average, what I found, you can write this down, the average product cost in direct sales is on a monthly basis again we're talking about how much does it cost to keep your one month supply right so we're not talking about one kit one package i'm talking about on a monthly basis because some companies you got to order a bunch of products to have one month supply right what i found in my history of direct sales is that the members pricing right just down the members pricing for these products on a monthly basis is at least at the very least over a hundred dollars usually $160 with shipping and taxes and all that kind of stuff. So $160 to $200 a month to have these other products. I've seen companies at $500 a month. It's crazy, okay? So, and that's in the members pricing. So again, at that point in time, if, if, if you're paying or, you're, or your team or your customers are paying $160 for their product, a new company comes along and similar pricing, but they're saying it's a better product, what do you think your customer might do? Or your team members might do? They might just go and try the new company, right? Especially if they're not getting any results. So results must speak as well. So what I love, again, about our company is number one, results speak above and beyond all. I think everyone has seen what our products can do. And second of all, it is priced so well that you know, unless someone is completely insane to want to pay more for a product that doesn't work as well, it's not going to happen. So that's why we have such a high retention ratio because Fountain of Life is priced so well. The toothpaste, you know, the, 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 the shampoos, everything is priced so well that, you know, if someone saw a newer company with a newer product, most likely they're not going to try it because they already know what they have, what works. All right. So, but again, if you, if you don't, have our products and our and our you know and our company then what's going to happen is you're going to watch your team and your customers start to leave you and maybe that happened to you before you've been in other companies where you've seen you build a team so hard and majority of your team 80 80 90 percent after three four five years they're all gone they moved on that just meant you never had a product or service that they actually wanted and could afford and wanted to keep buying on a monthly basis. And that, so guys, this is a huge thing when it comes to building our business, because none of us, I'm a, I'm a distributor like you guys, none of us want to be here 
to build it for 10 years and then do another company 10 years down the road, right? When I build it once, have it last for life. That's what we're aiming for here. And so I've seen leaders get so torn. I mean, their heart is split in half because when your team starts to leave you, here's what also happens. If the team starts leaving, the leaders usually catch on first, right? The leaders of these other companies where the teams are dying, the leaders realize, hmm, my team is, the orders are down. They're trying this new company. They have to make a choice. Do they try to hang on and, and try to convince what they have left to not leave, but they already left already? So do they, do they wait till the thing, their business dies and then switch? Or do they switch first and try to bring the team with them? But that of course causes massive casualties because you're the guy telling everyone, this is the company, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. And when joins you, you see things aren't going well and you, and you take off first. Now, fortunately, I haven't seen on average numbers wise, a lot of people leave our company, but the ones that have, uh, just to, you know, again, not very many, they're not doing anything with that more successful than what, what they've done and accomplished here. And it's sad because had they stayed, they would have made a lot more money. But the ones who stuck on board, everyone's checks are again thriving because logically we have the right combination of products, comp plan, all that kind of stuff, right? So, and again, um, I want you to ask yourselves, right? When you see another leader talking to you about how great their company is and how, you know, uh, and you hear their, their, their speech, right? The one thing I have to ask these different leaders when they try to pitch me on their companies, I always ask, you know, I said, you know, so when did you get started? Oh, I just got started last month. I said, well, honey, how many companies have you been with? Next time you meet a leader, do yourself a favor and ask them that question. How many companies have you been with? And if they say 10, 12, 13, you already know that this person does not know what to look for or they don't know what they don't know. We're not blaming them. It's, it just could be innocent ignorance, if you want to call it that, or lack of knowledge. But you got to think about that, right? So, you know, uh, I met people that tried to play the, I guess, the, the, the hot shot with me and try to play the big leader with me and, you know, convince me why to join their company. But when I asked them, you know, how many companies have you been with? And they say, you know, well, and they start naming companies, like alphabetical order A to Z, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, I've been in my company for almost 13 years now. I can show you how to earn a lifelong residual income if you'd like to learn, right? I hope you see my point here, guys. And so again, you will have retention. Remember these three things, right? You will have retention if your product works. Because it doesn't matter how much hype you put into it and how much fake marketing you do, if it doesn't work, eventually they will quit. Okay, eventually they will stop if it doesn't work. So products have to work. You will have retention if people can sell your products. Does it make sense, guys? Right? Because you will have people that want to get in, just, they want to buy it because they want the health benefits and they want the benefits of the products. But again, people get involved in MLM because they want to make money. But again, going back to the previous question, is your product too expensive? If the product is too expensive, at the member's pricing is too expensive, that means the retail price is even higher, how can they sell? And the one thing that I always tell people uh, to explain this, and I hope you understand this point and write it down, and I use it all the time when I want to share with you guys, is majority of the people who will get involved in MLM, they are going to be the middle income families and the low income families. Think about this, right? The really rich people, they probably already have a business. So they're probably already really busy. Yes, a few of them might get involved, but the really rich might just be your customers. Does that mean? And they'll refer customers to you, right? Because they're already really busy running their own business, right? But so MLM has always been really for the middle, like the masses. MLM is for the masses, right? The middle income, like myself. So, I was working at Telus, making 80,000 a year salary. And I knew that after 
paying taxes and my car, I didn't have enough money to live my dream life. So even though I was making good money, middle income, I still wanted to make more money. I didn't have time to open a business on the side. MLM was the only an easy option for me, right? So if your product is too expensive and you can barely afford it at the member's pricing, yet you know how the, 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 the normal training, you know, when you first get started, contact your closest friends and family, but your friends and family typically on average have the same income level as you do. So if you can barely afford your product, how can you sell at retail price to your friends and family? That is where the system breaks down already. It's already broken. But forget about the middle income people, the low income people. Can a low income person spend $160 on a product and expect to sell it for $200 to the friends and family if they're all low income people. This is where MLM has always been broken. And was always, so again, there's two ways to make money, right? Either you sell products or you recruit someone that sells products, right? That's how you make money. Either you sell products or you build a team that sells products. Of course, building a team takes more time. Selling a product is quicker, right? You meet someone, share the product, they wanna buy it, done. Building a team takes more time, explain the packages, explain the comp plan, blah, 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 right? So for most people, the first way, selling products is easier than trying to build a team. So if they can't even sell your products, do you think they're gonna stick around in your company very long and not making any money? Retention, it all relates, it's all related, all these things matter, okay? And the third one, of course, is what is, can people get your product somewhere else? If, again, you, you're selling vitamins, multivitamins, and there's 100 other companies selling multivitamins, you're going to have a tough time, a very tough time. And so, again, that's where, it's all, that's where Auckland's Global, think carefully how well-positioned we are in the MLM industry. We're the only company that has fashion. Write this down, the only company in all of direct sales that has fashion. The only company that has Michael Silver in the toothpaste, that has Fountain of Life, that has FOL extract in the skincare with Michael Silver, that has the Michael Silver toothpaste, that has the FOL extract in the shampoo and conditioner. The only one, only one. There are plenty of dear placenta companies, there's plenty of water filters, plenty of, you know, all these things out there. We are the only one in, that has what we have. So that is what relates to retention. So I just wanna pause it right here, get some water, and maybe have some of you guys, you know, again, uh, share a few of your, your words with me before I continue. Rene, I don't know if I'm the only one, but for some reason I'm not seeing number three. Uh, on on my screen, I don't know if others are uh, experiencing. Okay. Oh, okay. It's no, no, no. Number three after, uh, for you will have retention if. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I can see it on my screen. But I said it, it's it's if it, it, can people get it somewhere else? Okay. Can people get your product somewhere else? Yeah. Thank you though. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Well, let me check the. Yes. Well. I think persons are very attentive. We have lots of leaders on the call from all parts of the world. We have Anil from Vancouver on listening attentively. We have Ronen from um, Israel. And we have a number of persons all over. We have Maria, you know, you, you have plenty of persons on this call. All right. um, but um, Go on, I think then. we are listening so attentively that you know we are glued we are glued to 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 to, to the screen and to listening to you so Thank you. i would say down. i would say proceed but you've said some things um renee that it's remarkable because how do you expect to have retention in your company if your products do not work correct and secondly if the, the the cost to the members is already so high these members have to make a profit because we are, persons are in the company to make money. So by the time they sell the product, how many persons will be able to afford it? Therefore, 
the 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 market the, the niche market they have there is already so small and it's become so competitive how much um revenue can they generate and lastly as you said can these people get it anywhere else and and there are a number of mlm companies with products but those products there are other companies that produce it so it's very it's a very competitive market and many of them do not have the competitive edge or the competitive advantage that they they think they have but guess what opulence global we know we have it and we are confident that we have it you're going to become the next trainer my friend <laughs> 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 okay well again thank you Cuthbert. and uh, uh i do want to continue because there's so much more to cover again uh, yes. thank you for the quick uh, wrap up there and and uh, and the summary thank you so much so uh Perfectly well said. So again, just to finish off retention, one thing that you'll often hear our owner talk about is does your company sell a need or a want? Because these are two very powerful emotions, right? Uh, need and want. And so uh, want is actually stronger than need, but need is also very important. So for example, people don't need to smoke, but they want to smoke but they need to be healthy, right? People don't need to drink. They want to drink, but they still need to be healthy as well. Uh, people don't need to shop, but they want to shop, right? People should be shopping if they're broke, but they still keep on shopping and credit card bill get higher and higher. Uh, people don't need to buy brand name stuff, but they want to buy brand name stuff, right? So the cool thing that I just mentioned about Opulence Global is we have both. We have the want, and the need. In my early years, we only had the want, right? The fashion products, right? And that's how I made my million dollar business. It's amazing now that we actually have both. And that's really powerful and separates us from all the other companies in direct sales. Okay, so moving along to pitfall number 11, this is a huge one and this one, I was so surprised when I talked to other leaders that they haven't actually even taken the time to calculate this in their own companies. And what I'm talking about is what our CEO taught me is called the ED ratio, the earning per distributor ratio. Here's, this is the way to determine which comp plan pays more. This is the only way to figure it out. Because you're always going to meet people out there. They're going to tell you, I have this guy making 20 million, this guy making 100 million. You know, uh, we pay out the most. Now, everyone's going to say all this usual stuff. Here is how you actually know which comp plan plays the best. And so it comes down to the earning per distributor. What that means is forget all the bonuses because we understand already from the first training that bonuses come do the work once you get paid once what we're trying to seek here is the ongoing commissions your weekly commissions right so what the earning distributor is is to understand how much does each person whether they're your partner or your customer in your organization how much does each person on average pay you this is a key question. If you have a team of 100 people and, that, and you do the calculations using that company's competition plan and you decipher that 100 people can pay you $100 per month, that means it's one-to-one -one ratio. Make sense? Because 100 people is going to pay you $100 per month. So the earning per distributor ratio is one person to $1. If you want to make a thousand dollars, you need to have a thousand partners and customers, which is a horrible ratio. So just to share with you, the industry average for the ED ratio is about a dollar when it comes to health and wellness. Now that's on average. I've seen worse than this as well. Okay. When it comes to, so again, my example before was $10,000 a month. You got to have 10,000 people, okay? Now, in a lot of the service type MLM companies like telecom or gas or hydro, blah, 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 the earning per distributor is about 30 cents. And you might ask the, me the question, well, Renee, why is it so much lower? It's because the profit margins are even smaller. 
So the company can only afford to pay out what they're making, right? And they don't want to jack up the price too high because it won't sell, but then they can't pay you a higher earning distributor ratio, okay? So what you have to do in every comp plan that I look at is I look at, okay, if it's 100 people, what, let's assume these 100 people are paying 150 per month. That's like the average usual in MLM, right? To maintain your income, $150 per month. If 100 people paid 150 per month, what does that pay you in that company by using their comp plan? And that's what I've done. I have a website called Our GWT, O-U-R, GWT.com. And I actually made a list uh, of all these companies I've compared. And, you know, there's always new ones, but, you know, there's at least 100 there already, okay? So the cool thing with Opulence Global, and I can show you how I got this number, is we pay out up to $7.66 per person. That's, that's, so that's seven times, that's 700% more payout than the average company in direct sales. All right, so, and here's the math, if you're wondering, and forgive me if it's a bit numbers here, but remember, right, in our binary composition plan, when you have 5,400 CV, right? That's the power cycle. You earn how much? You earn $460. And most people will get there over a few months, right? We also know that every lifestyle advisor who pays the monthly 150, and not just your advisors, but also your customers, okay? So don't forget, right? We're, lo we're looking at not just your advice, not just your members, but um, we're also looking at your, your customers, right? Okay, so um, your, your partners, I just revised the, the slide here. So your advisors plus your customers, if they're spending 150 per month, because most people buy at least four bottles or two bottles of FOL plus shampoo plus you know, skincare. And so on average, I'm just saying 150 per month. Well, on $150, if they bought Fountain of Life, we know that the commissionable volume or the points for 150 is 60 percent so 150 dollars times 60 percent is 90 points so in other words every time someone pays 150 for their products of fountain of life you are getting 90 points okay so that means if we have 90 so if we have 60 people LAs or customers, okay? 60 people who are paying the 150 per month, which is 90 points, then 60 people times 90 points is 5,400. In other words, 60 partners or customers will generate for you 5,400 points Again, a power cycle, every 5,400 pays you 460. In other words, 60 partners and customers will pay you $460 per month. So 60 people equals 460. To calculate the earning per distributor, we divide both sides of the equation by 60. So 60 people divided by 60 is one person. 460 per month divided by 60 people equals 7.66. And this simple calculation is what I have done in almost every single MLM company that I that people come across to me. And it's simple. I, I, I you know I look at the crown plan, I figure out what it takes to generate a commission using 150 per month per, per, per person. That's all I do. And there's not been one company in this planet that has paid more than ours because our CEO is a genius when it comes to creating competition plans. So again, it's, it's such a, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a simple thing to do, yet so many leaders that I've come across have not even understood this concept. It's kind of like they calculate what they can earn based on what someone else tells them. Like someone say, hey, you can make 5,000 a month, come, you know, come and do it. And they're given a few for first few steps and, and they go but they don't really think about, well, what's the actual math here? 
I guess for me being a programmer, I need to reverse engineer. So my goal was I want to make 5,000 a month. I wanted to know how many people do I need on average buying the products, paying 150 per month, do I need to make that goal? And so again, when it comes to this, think about it. And I ask people, would you rather have 100 people in your team to pay you $100 a month or have the same 100 people in our company paying you $766 per month? So again, you know, once you understand the ED ratio, you will understand really quickly why nothing else makes sense. It's game over. You understand why despite so many offers I have been given to of course, join other companies. Um, it's like no way in ever will I ever do that because there's so many reasons in this training alone that again, will explain to you why I made that decision. And so again, you know, I think this is just such a huge topic. It's such a big one. It's so important. Like, again, I, I can see some of the leaders, you know, like Aaron Spring saying, kaboom, game. Like she gets it because, you know, this makes so much importance when it comes to picking a client plan. So why don't we just pause right there um, and, and uh, just, you know, and then uh, continue after get a few more comments coming in. Yes, Rene. Um, <laughs> an eye opener indeed. And uh, we are getting, we've gotten some messages. Um, Erin Spring says kaboom game changer and then um well i did i told erin game changer indeed it is indeed a game changer and berlin said agreed erin absolutely 100 percent and again ready i'm an accountant by profession so when you started the ed ratio i said okay i'm just going to follow this you know, so now my, my eyes are now open even more than I thought they were already open. You know what I mean? So <laughs> my pupils are dilating here now, <laughs> all okay. because of you, Rene. <laughs> you know, it's just remarkable. Can you imagine the industry average? You just make $100 with 100 persons. And with us, you make 766 dollars per month it's just remarkable there is no comparison and fribonia opondo from kenya says wow wow um lee nice. dodge says thank you renee for breaking it down where everyone can understand and see the big picture indeed 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 so renee thank you, thank you and proceed Okay, thank you. I, I think I shared on one of the previous two calls where, you know, I was at this event, I met some other millionaires in network marketing at the special event. And these are people that are making, you know, about 90,000 a month to six figures a month. And again, you know, when I asked them, how big is your team? Minimum, minimum was 100,000 people. Some guy had 150,000, some guy had 200,000, one guy had 500,000 people in his team to make that six figure monthly income. But that's nuts. Like, you know, when I hear that, what it's telling me is that the average person does not have a chance in the blue moon of getting there. But in Office Global, if you can build even a small team, hey, you're making some pretty good residual income, right? So it's so important here. So again, I just want to say thank you to all the people just sharing your, your thoughts because, you know, it gives you more energy when I see you guys getting more lit up as well too with this kind of information because I know when I first heard it, it really got me excited. So um, moving on to number 12 now, uh, oh, sorry, which should be number 12, um, is what we call payout in retail sales. And this is a big one that we kind of talked about already before, but I do want to just, again, really, uh, push some key points here because the one thing that I notice, and it, again, we Rene, talk, oh, yes, go ahead. Uh, this is supposed to be pitfall number 12 or yes. 11 continued. Yeah, it's actually number 12. I'm going okay. to uh, change the uh, the numbering here as well. So forgive me because uh, these are some of my older slides, I haven't trained them for a while, uh, but I've made it back to number 12. There we go. So <laughs> not number 12. Uh, is, is payout in retail sales. So again, what we are asking here, 
And a simple question you can ask people if they're, you know, huffing and puffing about their company is you ask them, you know, how much retail sales do you do? You know, does your company actually have real retail sales? Because I have asked so many different leaders, you know, locker room talk, behind closed doors, you know, in private meeting rooms. I'm like, look, be honest with me, you know, with your product, how many people out of 100 sell your stuff at retail? They're like, well, you know, about 99% buy at wholesale, which means it's too expensive. That's why no one's doing it, right? And so again, um, most companies, it's funny, they, every company to look legal in their competition plan, their first way of making income is always retail sales. Hey, sell retail, sell retail, because they want to look legal, right? But in reality, most companies, their products are so expensive. Again, no one is able to sell at the retail price. So then it becomes a whole recruitment game. But again, you know, between selling products and building a team, the easier one is selling products. Building a team takes more time and some more skills sometimes, right? So most companies aren't designed to help your team, your people, you and your team to actually succeed because of the pricing of the product. So um, I know of, uh, again, this is, be very careful. I see some companies that, you know, for example, ABC company, they promote that they sell all kinds of things online. And the whole presentation is about online sales, but in reality, no one is selling retail. Um, and there's a company, you know, initials MA, um, that boast about how much they sell online. You can buy, you can buy a keyboard, you can buy a computer. But when I ask all the main leaders, show me, because you know, in their system, it distinguishes online sales in their team versus the members buying you know, their monthly auto ship, right? They can see the separation in the sales. When I ask the leaders to show me your online sales, they call it the internet sales versus the regular sales. It's like 99% came from regular sales, not even online. So just be very careful because again, you know, a lot of companies are trying to sell you this thing. Well, we have everything online, you can buy it online. End of the day, you know, yes, people want to buy things online, but not everything. You know, if I want to buy a keyboard or I need a keyboard, I don't want to buy it online and wait three days. I don't want to buy it right now. My whole thing is just don't be fooled when people tell you about how much they sell online or in retail. Because you can actually ask them. And you know, because uh, you know, even in our meetings, I've asked rooms full of people who in this room has sold our products at the retail pricing. Everyone hand goes up. That's a healthy indicator. In fact, we had a publication on Business for Home about eight months after we started selling Fountain of Life. You should read this article. And it showed that almost 70% of the sales of our products went to customers. So of all the products going out, of 100% going out, 70% was to customers. That means we have more members selling to more customers. Whereas other companies have only members buying it, selling it to no one. That's an unhealthy indicator. So you need to have a product that people can sell. It all relates to retention. So again, the pitfall is again here is do you actually have real retail sales. Okay, so that's number 12. And um, uh, again, you can see here that we really focus on retail sales. We have the catalogs, we have you know, home branding party stuff. And again, we even have stats to track that as well too. So uh, moving along though, and so to update this to say number 13, this is pitfall number 13. Um, this is another very tricky one. And we'll end it off, with, I guess, with, with this topic here is actually what we call payout in matching bonuses. So, you know, again, think about how many times have you heard of what you call a matching bonus, right? And so the question is, does your company pay a matching bonus and how much does it pay? Now, what a matching bonus usually is, is whoever you personally introduce, let's say, just for argument's sake, I introduced Cuthbert and he made X amount of dollars in commissions. 
So the first thing to understand is a matching bonus is never paid on other bonuses. So if Cuthbert enrolled someone and he earned a sign-up bonus, I don't get a matching bonus on the sign-up bonus. Matching bonuses are paid on the commissions that Cuthbert makes. So if, if Cuthbert makes a power cycle, he makes $460. In other companies, they pay you a matching bonus uh, on that $400, right? Okay, that's how matching bonuses work. Some companies don't even pay a matching bonus. And some companies pay a really high percentage in a matching bonus. And they'll say, you know, we pay 20% matching bonus. We pay 50% matching bonus. But don't forget, if a company pays out more in bonuses, what does it mean for their commissions? It mean, it's a ratio, right? If they, if they promote a higher matching bonus payout, it means that the commissions are going to be lower. But here's the sneaky thing, right? Would you want more bonuses or more commissions? We've already talked about that. You want to have more in commissions. But here's the thing. Most companies that have these high bonuses, their commissions are very tiny. So is it worthwhile getting a high matching bonus percentage of 50% on a small number? Because 100% matching bonus on a dollar is still a dollar. It's not worth making. Like I'd rather have more commissions, right? Because again, don't forget the key thing about this bonus is you only earn it, write this down, you only earn this bonus if your first generation person makes a commission check. You have to understand this. You don't, if, you're, if the guy you introduce does nothing with the business, they don't make a binary cycle, you get nothing on that. You, this bonus doesn't apply to you. You have to understand how this works, right? Because some companies, their whole presentation, it pissed me off. <laughs> their whole presentation was about how we have 20% first generation, 15% second generation. Like there, it was like all these matching bonuses. I'm like, who? But no one's making these bonuses. And don't forget, some of these matching bonuses, you have to attain higher ranks to get these bonuses. So majority of it doesn't even apply to you in the first place. Okay, so, um, so to give you an example here, and uh, it is ABC company pays you 100% matching bonus on your personal sponsor member named John. John made $20, so you made 100% matching bonus on $20, which is 20 bucks, let's say, right? The difference, and again, uh, most companies don't even have 100% matching bonus. They usually have like a 10% matching bonus. So let's say I choose Cuthbert. Cuthbert made 20 bucks in a cycle check. Then I would have earned basically, you know, uh, $2, okay? But again, this is dependent that Cuthbert makes a commission check. So now this bonus, I have to rely upon Cuthbert getting to work. It's not in my control anymore, this bonus. This bonus here is reliant upon Cuthbert. The difference with Opulence Global is, um, and I'm gonna pause and give you a better example, right? Let's use our example here. Let's say uh, that in a, we're looking at our power cycle, okay? So uh, everyone in the chat box, you know, just, just follow with me here. Tell me, what do you make on a power cycle of $5,400, right? On $5,400, okay? I'm just, I'm just gonna actually share my screen here and share, and share with you, all right? So, Oculus Global, on 5,400 CV, right? You get paid $400 cash, correct, right? So, I'm gonna give you an example of what other companies do. So. Uh, let's say that John, which is Cuthbert here, made this cycle check of $400, right? I got 10% of the $400, uh, which was $40, correct? Okay. But again, this is really dependent that Cuthbert has to make this check. So not only am I trying to build my own two teams, 
I have to make sure that Cuthbert also makes his binary cycle check, right? So it's really dependent on what your first generation does. In Opus Global, when you make the $400, right, the difference is you're making the matching bonus on your own efforts. So as long as you make the $400, you're gonna get basically um, a 15% match between the marketing bonus and the convention bonus. So that's why the $400 uh, on the 400, right, you also get basically $30 total, right, from the match from the uh, convention bonus. Uh, so $30 from $30 from the marketing bonus, right? And $30 from the what? Convention bonus. What's that total? The total is $50. So let me just pause it here because I really have to make sure you understand this, right? Again, most people will never make a matching bonus because you're really relying upon your first generation making a cycle check. And that doesn't always happen, right? But so it's, it's easier to make a matching bonus on whose efforts? On your own efforts. Because as long as I get to work, I make this. Other companies, I have to get to work, I have to make sure he gets to work, right? But again, I'd rather get 15% plus 15% matching bonuses on my efforts than trying to get 10% on, you know, or even 20%, even 100%, because it's not guaranteed you're going to make it, all right? So again, you know, this is, I hope that makes sense to you guys. In Optimus Global, you don't have to rely on others to make your matching bonus you rely upon yourself. So um, I think we have five minutes left. Maybe we should just sort of pause it here and uh, leave uh, uh, the, the rest of them. I have one uh, could count here. Yeah, actually just, just one more uh, left um, after this. And just a summary of what you can do when you talk to other network marketers. So, or I could try to finish it. Uh, should I just try to finish it folks? Yeah, let's finish it. Let's finish it. Okay, okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So this one should be actually number now number fourteen. Okay, it's going to uh, again. Uh, we I add some things here. So this is number fourteen, people. Okay, this is a a bit of a tricky one uh, and maybe a bit shocking for some of you, but it does happen. So here we go. I'm gonna try to finish it off here. Number fourteen is does your company and you don't even even always know the answer to this, this question do they actually have a payout to buy leaders? This is one of the things that really can demotivate me when I first learned about it. A lot of other companies, you have to ask, do they pay leaders to join that company? And I've seen so many people try to justify why it makes sense to buy leaders. And to me, here's my point of view just in simple English, right? How is it fair that I'm working my butt off just as hard as someone else is, but they get paid to join, right? Okay, so, so first of all, I don't think it's fair, but you might have a difference of opinion. Maybe you think it's more worthwhile. But to me, if the company is so good and the leader is so good, and the leader can see why the company is so good, a leader shouldn't need to get a deal to come in to build a team. Because he, you know, if he's that good, he or she should be able to do it on their own. But what companies are doing nowadays, and it's really, like it, it wouldn't bother me if companies made it public and said, hey guys, uh, Renee, who just joined, we gave him a special deal. Uh, we guaranteed him 40 grand a month, a signing bonus of $200,000. And only he got that because he's special. But you guys don't have it, but he had it. At least you're being transparent in that case. Okay. But what pisses me off, and it boils my blood, is a lot of the companies do these deals to have that leader have a big check. They then put him on stage and say, hey guys, look at Renee, he just joined last month, he already made 40,000. 
he can do it, you can do it too. No, you cannot do it because you didn't get a deal. It, wasn't, it was not fair from the very beginning. And so I didn't even realize that this happens. And you may be wondering, well, why would a company do that? And it comes down to this. I'll give you an example. Let's say me and Cuthbert, you know, we are motivated. And you and me go to Malaysia. We find this special mushroom and we, we, we customize this new, you know, latest and greatest health product. So let's say me and Cuthbert, we have a company now. How do we go and build this company? Well, the slow way is to go and build it one by one. That is what our owner did. Our owner, from the day 2005 in his basement, started this company with one-on-one -on -one meetings. He built it for real, the real way. Other companies that have investors, they want to do it faster. And what they do is they start to buy leaders to come on over. And leaders who are maybe not making much money, they, they see the little shiny coin and they join. So a lot of companies do that because they want to build it faster. But at the same time, you know, um, it's just a faster way to get leaders to join the company. So, but again, you just think about this, right? Is it fair? Is it fair for the people in the company to get positions or to get, you know, for example, these deals? And to me, um, it's, it's, it's a tough sell because leaders who are actually making money in their companies, would they leave to join your company you know, for a deal? Usually not because they're making money. The only way they're going to join is actually not making money. But my whole point is, regardless of this, regardless of that, the, the thing that bothers me is you have to ask, is it real? Is, you know, and, and that's what bothers me because you now have these people who are being put on business for home. And I, I know some of these people, like I know, I, I know who they are. And they're saying all these stories. And the biggest bust that went down probably about three years ago was from a company that got called out because someone in their company that got these special deals and in the contract it says you will not you will not disclose this deal he got screwed by the company so he went out there and and disclosed his contract after that happened there was like a whole research done on that company and they found out that almost all of their leaders who were on stage saying Hey guys, I just joined in my first month. I made $10,000. I can do it. You can do it too. It was all fake. And it bothers me because they're giving false hope. It really bothers me when people do that. I am proud to say, like I am so proud to say that the leaders in our company, we built it from day one from scratch. We built it from scratch, which means if I can do it, it means you can do it too because we built it from scratch. We didn't have a deal. We didn't get special bonuses or commissions. In other companies, for example, what they'll do is in a binary comp plan, they'll say, you don't even have to build two lakes. Just build one leg, we'll pay you on that one leg. Or they'll be given, you know, like all these things they can do to, sh to pay the person for bringing people on board, but they don't have to satisfy the same criteria that we have to satisfy but they can make high commissions. So all in all, I just don't think it's right that this happens because, you know, if a company is that good and a product's that good, it, it should be able to build naturally. And we don't have to rely upon these kind of deals, right? So again, it's just not real. Um, in Alchemist Global, not one leader is bought. Like no one is paid to join this company. No one's given... 20 grand signing bonus. Everyone made it themselves. So, um, and just to finish it off, uh, in terms of these, these uh, you know, uh, bio leaders, is are you impressed by some of these fake stories out there? Because I'm telling you guys, every time I hear someone tell me, you know, like just yesterday, Renee, someone in this company is making $2 million per month. $2 million per month. Well, okay, so you know, 
it just, you know, I just heard so much of this stuff by now. And I'm not silly. I asked them, how big is your team? They'll say 3,000. I'll look at the comp plan. I'll say, there's logically no way you can make that money with 3,000 people. Unless these 3,000 people are spending 10,000 a month on products, which is not going to, right? So, um, but again, just I want you to understand that don't be sold by the hype stories of how much someone's making in their company. What I always tell people is if you want to know whether or not you can make money, don't look at my income. It has nothing to do with what you make. My income has nothing to do with what you will make. What you have to look at is, do you have a product? Again, there's a few questions, right? Do you have a product that can sell? Is it effective? Does it work? Can you see the compensation plan paying you? All these things we talked about in, the, in, the, in these three videos is what you must look at to see if you can make the money that they're describing to you. Don't just believe it because you saw someone holding a check. Checks can be made fake. There could be different things going on behind the scenes that you don't know how they got that check. There's deals being given around. So all in all, uh, you know, just don't always buy these things. Um, and you must look at the things we've taught you in these three recording videos to understand, can you actually make it for yourself? Okay. And again, um, I always tell people, don't ever look at what someone else makes and assume that you can make it too. Because you must look at, Again, the facts and the stats that we've covered in the training videos. And, you know, again, uh, back then, uh, we had about 30,000 people in our company. I believe right now we're close to about 100,000 people in our company. And again, the key thing is, um, what's amazing about, about timing-wise is, if your company you mentioned to 100 of your friends, if 99 have, have, have heard about it, or 90 have heard about it, it's not the best timing. But at the same time with Optimus Global, you know, most of the people you're gonna to talk to, out of every 100 people, probably 98 have not heard of this company yet. That just means you have an incredible opportunity right now. With only 100,000 people or so in our company, yet there's millions, billions of people in the world out there I hope you can see the opportunity you have with Offense Global and that you grab it by the horn and you run with it. Um, to finish off as well too, um, is just, you know, simple questions that I want to ask you is, you know, would you agree that understanding the comm plan is important for your business? And I hope that these three training videos have really done that for you. Again, simple questions to ask. So when you meet someone else in a, in a different company who is, you know, always talking about, you know, how much, you know, they're making, blah, 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 blah. Um, don't forget that the simple things you can ask them just to appear to be a genius in comp plans is you ask them, well, how many lakes do you have to build? And then how many levels does your plan pay down to? Does your plan have ranks that impact your commission? What is the total payout of your company? You ask these four questions, I'm telling you, you're gonna look like a genius. Because most of them have no clue how to answer you. And so now you can start educating your prospect on a few, don't go into like this training video, uh, you can watch it later, but to this very high level, why it makes sense to build two, not 10. Why get paid to infinity and not get paid on 10 levels? Why to have a company that doesn't have ranks that stop your commission? Like all these kind of things, right? Um, and if you want like a real genius, is you ask someone, what's your ED ratio in your company? And again, you know, um, you sell, you know, most companies are one to one dollars. Ours is one to seven dollars and 66 cents, right? One thing that I didn't even mention before in my, in my slides was that most companies, when someone joins at the big package, you don't get volume for that. Like in my last companies, when someone signed up as the packages, the big packages, there was no volume. It was just, they got the package, they got the products, you got the, you know, it's, it's on the monthly, you get something. In our company, we actually give volume with the packages to infinity. 
So I want to add that as well too. Um, you know, again, do you have, does your car make you have certain kind of qualifications, you know, uh, like, like just to sign a lease? Um, and overall, I just want to really uh, wish that you guys can help me push out these training videos to the industry because the more people we can educate and not try to hide behind closed doors and put, you know, a blindfold to their eyes, the more smarter people we're going to have and the more people you will have to join your company because they realize what we have at Opulence Global. So thank you again for uh, allowing me to train these topics and uh, back to you, Casper. Thank you. Thank you, Rene. Huh? Rene, you caught me off guard. I was still taking notes, man. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I can't help it, you know. I mean, with you doing these training sessions, the last three, Rene, I mean, this is the, the, the um, conclusion of the three. But I know that everyone who have been on, everyone who has been on these calls will, con will go back and want to go through the recordings again. So I'm hoping that um, corporate will put this out early so that we can, we can go back and review. I truly believe that we all need to review this because whilst you were do going through it, Rene, you, you do it in a very simplistic manner. So we pick it up. But like everything else, you need to go back to it because there are times you watch a movie and every time you watch a movie, even though you watch it 10 times, the 10th time you see something that you had not seen in the ninth previous times you watched it, you know, and that's what I believe. And again, as you said, the last line is, it basically summarizes everything. The more you can educate others, the more you're helping the industry and 96 million people in it and much, much more than that, really. In, in, in the industry, because remember the world is our oyster. We have more than 7 billion people. So whilst we, we don't expect 7 billion people to be um, distributors, mm -hmm. but we have the potential to have five to 6 billion people be customers. And the fact that we have a product that, that works, we have products that work, we have products that are affordable and uh, we, we have products that people cannot get elsewhere, you know? So no matter how you look at it, where else are you going to get fountain of light? You know, um, look our products, you know, you look at the, the toothpaste, it has it, it, the micro silver in it. So it's like, we are, our company is innovative. Our company is, is, is different and uh, it benefits the, the distributors, you know, and Rene, we have quite a few comments. I would like to, to read a few before we just, we end. Please. It's about 11 past the hour, but I will read a few of them because um, I believe that these comments are, are pertinent to, to, to the training and it's, it's also testament to the high quality of training that you have given here. Um, Lee said, you even, you even paid more to join than, than what we pay now. Um, yes, and uh, then we have, uh, Teresa says, yes, 100% in, in important. Thank you, Rene. I believe again, that was when you were talking about uh, the payout to buy leaders and so on. I think that was the, the, the aspect. Um, Valinas, read whether you could elaborate briefly on number four. Um, and I think number four is, does your plan have ranks that impact your commission? Now, I believe this would have been pitfall number seven, if I recall. No, it was pitfall number, number five. No, 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 no. Sorry, Rene. I think the no. payout and ranks is number three. But I know we covered that in the the first of those three sessions. So I don't know if you want to say a few words on that, Rene. Yeah, just, just really quickly. Um, I know people are asking me for the slides. I, I got a chance to do a quick uh, last minute adjustments. Uh, I just put the link there for everyone. If you want to download my slides, again, you know, I want to share information as always. I put the slides there as well too uh, in the big group chat, all right? Uh, and just to uh, really quickly, 
Um, other companies, again, what they'll do is in order to have um, or to keep your commissions, you have to constantly advance your ranks, right? So uh, if you don't advance your ranks, you don't earn your commissions and you start to lose on your commissions. Um, in Oculus Global, you can join on this date, first day, you're in LA. I've been here for 10 years, 12 years now. I'm a lesser director four. If you have 5,400 CV and I have 5,400 CV, guess what? We make the exact same paycheck. Other companies will say, well, no, hold on. Renee's a higher rank. I'm going to make more per cycle than you are. So maybe your 5,400 5, CV pays you $200, but I get paid 460. That's not fair to me because we're doing the same effort. We should make the same income, right? So that's what I meant with ranks impacting your commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Renee. Thank you. Um, yeah, Berlin says thank you. So let me get some more of the. Okay, I'm trying to get as many of this. Yes. Um, bear with me a bit. Um, yes. Okay, we get paid on the lesser leg and not both. Uh, that's Teresa. Um, that's, I think she's, she's talking about other compensation plan. Yeah, yes. Um, again, Lawrence Chan asked what's, what's the ED? It is the, the ratio of the, what's earning, earning per distributor. Correct. Yes. If I'm, if I'm, yes. So again, you see, was I was taking note, apparently you see the FOL is working with the retention, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, but persons have indicated there. Yes, yes, yes. Um, thank you, Renee. You're getting um, persons are thanking you for this training, Renee. Um, awesome. Thank you for the awesome training. Well, persons are asking for the slides, and I think you've provided the the link to the slide. Thank you, Renee. Powerful training. Thank you, Renee, for such incredible training. So, persons are thanking you, and Erin says. Thanks, Renee, for these trainings. Definitely overdue on these key reasons why we are so unique. We are so, such a unique opportunity. Let's get Forensic Loud team on why we are so proud to be Upland independent partners to Upland Global Company. So, so glad we have so many persons learning and expanding the vision going into the new decade coming up. Let's go to the billion in the years. Indeed, indeed, um, Erin. We all should be thinking of the billion because what our CEO has said is that the distribution ratio will definitely mm -hmm. ensure that many, many of us in this company, once we are working hard, can become millionaires as a consequence. Okay, and, and uh, Rene, I'm sure, wants many persons in the team who are working hard to achieve that, that status also. Um, Berlin says, thank you, Rene. Awesome, super training as usual. Um, Fibronia Opondo from Kenya says, thanks, Rene, for sharing um, the link. Um, Nabi St. Lucia says, great. Donna Harper says, amazing. Thanks. Lucy Karanja in Kenya says, amazing training. Thanks, Rene. So, Rene, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of thank you messages. Rene, I must, I must, I can't thank you enough, Rene. You have awesome. been training us the last three weeks. And it's remarkable. And I know for many of us on this call, we will continue to, to look at this, look at our notes. And now that you have provided the links, we are going to go through this. Don't be surprised if you get questions from, from us around the world at times. <laughs> <laughs> you are a remarkable trainer. And uh, it's now 17 past, past um, well, for you, 10, for us in the Caribbean, 11. Um, thank you so very much. I want to thank everybody who's been on the call. Me too. Renee, we're looking forward to whatever training. We know you're the Complan um, guru, in fact. And uh, we always look forward to, to you spending your, your precious time with us um, to train us. So thank you. Thank you so very much. You're very welcome. And by the way, folks, you know, um, again, these are the things where I, I know that as we educate the world, the world, the world in, of, of MLM, 
this kind of training benefits really us because we're just so different than other companies out there. And so, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely, you know, share it. If any questions, feel free to ask. I know, of course, we have some incredible things to announce for tomorrow. But, uh, but that being said, I just want to say thank you for, you know, giving me the chance to train you guys for the past three weeks. And uh, looking forward to uh, many more future trainings. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. And, yeah, Kathy, we can uh, finish up with the amazing announcements for tomorrow because you do not want to miss tomorrow. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to try to, to, to get it quickly there. Um, uh, Rene, and um, yes, but um, I want everyone to remember that our CEO and our senior vice president will be doing some training in the UK, Double Tree by Hilton on 60 Pentonville Road on, on the 13th and the 14th of December. Um, we have some, some massive expansion in the UK. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not in the UK, you have your prospects in the UK, uh, please reach out to your prospects and please ensure that these persons are at the training and that they themselves can learn as much as we're learning so they can expand and explode their business and achieve success as many of us on this call are already doing. Because remember, we are not a selfish family. We share what the knowledge we have, just like Rene has shared every Tuesday for the last three Tuesdays with us, his knowledge. And so we expect to do the same with persons outside who want to know as much as possible about the business. And don't forget, tomorrow evening, December 11th, we have Dr. Alnas, who is the formulator of the Fountain of Life, will be with Daniela Ferreira and with David O. Um, based on our call with David last night, David said that there will be some announcements. Um, he was very tight-lipped about it. So it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot afford to miss this. And that is going to be at, uh, at our um, headquarters in, in, at Richmond Hill. And it starts from... Six, registration is at 6.30 p.m. The tour starts at 7.30, ladies and gentlemen. Do not miss it. 7.30 Eastern time. Um, the, the guest speaker, um, Dr. Alnaz, will be talking from 8.30. But guess what? You don't want to come in at 8.30. You want to be on from the onset. And I want everybody on this call tonight to not only be on the call, but call all your, your, your partners, your, your downline, your team members, your prospects. They need to learn more about the remarkable product that is Fountain of Life and the remarkable things that Fountain of Life is doing in the lives of thousands and thousands of persons all over the world. So let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's share. Let's share the love, as I always say. It is important that we do that because we are loving people. We are a loving family, regardless of what part of the world that we are from. And so with this, uh, again, Rene, thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone on the call this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this night. Have a blessed day. Stay forensic. And remember, be inspired not expired. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you.